So you're ready to retire mentally, but you're not sure you can do it. Well, I'm gonna give you 10 ways that might improve your chances of retiring sooner than later. Let's go. So the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do on our list is create a budget. Now this is super important. Most people have never done a budget or if they have, they've kind of given up and said, ah, not for me. But it's really important to know what you have coming in and what you have going out. You can start now before you retire and really take a good inventory of your financial picture. And that is like one of the most important things. There's so many budgets that are available for free online. You can just type in free budget into your computer and you're gonna have some amazing choices to pick from. Number two on our list is to create a budget that is your current income and your current spending. And then you're gonna kind of anticipate what your future income is gonna look like with future spending. Now that's really important because what's happening today is definitely gonna be a little bit different when you retire. So you're gonna to have to take all kinds of different things into account. First of all, your income's gonna change. You're gonna lose your income from your job or whatever it is that you've been doing you know, during your work history. But then you're also gonna be looking at what you'll be getting in from other things that you've either saved for or prepared for or social security or things like that. So most financial planners give you an idea when you're looking at a number for retirement that you're gonna need about 80% of the income that you've had coming in through your work history to support yourself through retirement. So the third thing that you'll wanna do, and this still involves your budgeting, is to really get an exact number, as exact as you can, about the type of income you're gonna have coming in uh, during retirement. So if you've never looked at what you're gonna be getting for Social Security, <clears throat> it's very easy. You can go on the Social Security website. They have, uh, as soon as you put in your information, you set up a username and a password you can see how much you would get at 62 or 64 or 65 or 70, whatever your full retirement number is, those are all there on the Social Security website. They've made it really user-friendly and it's a, it's a great thing to use. It's a wonderful tool to help you budget those numbers. Now, say you've saved some money in your 401k and you're not, you really aren't sure what you're gonna be able to get from that or how you're gonna be able to live off of it. Again, look at the rates that uh, they're offering for CDs and bonds. And again, the internet is a great source of things to give you that information. You can go to a, a website called bankrate.com. It's a really good website that'll tell you like the highest paying CDs at the different banks, that type of thing. You can go to fidelity.com. They also offer some really good information for people that are doing research on their own. And you can just plug in some, some conservative numbers and get an idea what kind of interest and dividends that you might expect to get from your 401k or your savings. And then lastly, your pension. Most people know the number they're gonna get at a certain time for their pension. But if you don't, you know, you can always contact your employer, find out how you can get those numbers for your pension. And it's it's oftentimes something you can look at on the computer. So you'll wanna really attack that and try to get that number honed in as specific as you can so you know what you're dealing with for retirement. Now, after you've done your budget and you see, well, you may not have quite as much as you're gonna need, you know, you may consider delaying that retirement a little while. And also, even if you retire, working out some other things to help you get an income and delaying your social security. The longer you wait, the higher that number is gonna be. And in addition to that, if you wait and you get a higher number for your monthly check for social security, you're gonna also get a higher number, you know, whenever they have raises, you know, cost of living adjustments, inflation adjustments, things like that will affect you in a more positive way throughout your lifetime. Number five on my list, and this is probably one of the most important things next to budgeting, and that is to pay off your credit cards. 
And if you can, you know, maybe whittle it down to one credit card or what have you, get rid of all of them by the time you retire, or at least most of them. But now's the time, if you can save an extra penny, you need to be working to pay off your credit card debt. Um, if you're not going to have the money that you had anticipated, you don't want to be paying 25% interest on something you bought four years ago. So that is really good advice that I have heard and I have taken personally. Pay off your credit card and work on trying to live on a cash basis. Number six on my list is to take inventory of your health, physically and mentally, and consider like what are the types of things you might need in retirement. I mean, if you're having problems with cataracts now, maybe it's time to get cataract surgery before you retire. Or if you know that you're gonna need some kind of a major operation, maybe take care of that while it's not so difficult to make the out-of-pocket payment that you're gonna make for your insurance. At the same time, you can utilize this time to get in better shape, eat better, exercise more, you know, do the things that you need to do if you need to stop smoking or maybe cut down on alcohol, different types of things. Now's the time to get in shape so that when that health you know, insurance changes or you go to Medicare or what have you, you know, you're not going to be using as many of the medical things as maybe you would have in the past. So that's, that's something I would look at. Also, you'll want to consider, do you have any type of interim health care before you hit the Medicare age? If you're 59 and you want to retire and you are not going to get Medicare till 65, you know, you're going to have six years that you're going to need to figure out what is your health care cost going to be. So you may want to contact your employer, find out different health care plans that are out on the market, do some shopping and, you know, make sure that that's not going to be something that just, you know, makes you realize that you weren't prepared enough and you have to go back out into the workplace. Number seven on my list is to consider getting a part-time job or starting a business through retirement. I mean, you're gonna have a lot more time on your hands and that can be good and that can be bad. If you're used to working the last 40 years of your life and you've been you know, going strong every single day, yeah, you're going to enjoy being retired. It's going to be fun, relaxing a little bit more, but it might also be a little bit boring. So you might consider if you have a hobby or an interest that you can think of a way to turn into like maybe some additional income. Maybe you like to crochet and you decide you want to start selling some of your crafts or sewing or woodworking or cabinetry, whatever it is that you enjoy doing. Maybe now it's time to consider taking that interest to a whole new level. And lots of retired people get into their retirement six months later and realize that they just really miss having friendships and things from work. So another idea is a part-time job. There's all kinds of part-time things you can do for retirees that get you out talking to other people, give you a little bit of extra income. And sometimes if you get over that, 24, 25 hours a week, it also provides you an insurance benefit. So, you know, it's definitely something to look into. Number eight on my list is to research benefits that are offered through your community for seniors. And there may be tons of things that you don't even know about. For example, in my area, they have a really amazing senior center. And I'll be honest with you, I've been semi-retired since I was 59 and a half and I have wanted to go there and pursue some of these fun things that they have available but I've just been too busy. They have some amazing programs for seniors. They have arts and crafts and exercise programs and even some travel with other seniors at a discounted price. A lot of senior centers will have these different things where you can get to know people, you can play cards every day. You know, a lot of them even have like senior lunch programs if you qualify or you can pay for them. Uh, you'll just have to look into things in your area, but there's so many things that are available to seniors now. I mean, you could go out to dinner and ask for a senior menu, 
you know, check out your local apps for your fast food places. If you enjoy getting a donut and coffee or you like going to McDonald's or something like that, they have all kinds of great senior things. And the apps are another great way using your phone to download an app from a some somewhere you like to go. Oftentimes, you'll get enough points or whatever. You'll get free food, free all kinds of stuff. Another really important thing to consider and to strategize about when you retire is saving money on groceries. Honest to goodness, I know people talk about it a lot online and in different kinds of podcasts and different things, but people spend more money on groceries than they do just about anything else. And that often doesn't include eating out, fast food, going out to dinner with friends and family. That's just what you spend at the grocery store. And oftentimes that stuff is thrown out because you buy so much, you can't use it all. So, you know, now's the time to really strategize. If you have some kind of a weekly menu plan that you can follow, that's a great way to save money. You know, try shopping from a shopping list. That's another great way to save money. Don't go to the grocery store hungry. That's another great way to save money. But there are so many amazing things for seniors. Um, check out and research things in your immediate area where you live. They may have food banks. They may have special food programs for seniors. You know, they just may have all kinds of things that you're not aware are even offered. And uh, they can be a huge help to you as far as your monthly budget. And now's the time to look into them before you retire. If you know that right now you're spending, I don't know, $500 a month on groceries, and you could cut that down to 100 or 150 by utilizing these different ideas, that's going to be an additional, what, $350, $400 a month that you can put towards something else maybe a cruise, maybe travel to Europe. And last but not least on my list, if you have equity in your home, it might also be a time to consider a reverse mortgage. Now it's not for everybody and you really need to research the companies out there to see you know, what kind of reputation they have, what kind of track record they have, if there's any complaints against them. But a reverse mortgage can make sense for many people who want to stay in their home. You know, for one reason or another, it's a great option. Now, you have a couple options when you do a reverse mortgage. You can either look at getting rid of your monthly payment because they're taking care of that and letting you live in the home, or they give you an income. So, you know, it might be worth looking into but be very careful and research it very carefully. You'll want to know all the pros and cons to a reverse mortgage. But pulling money out of your house, it, it makes sense to many people. So I hope all this is helpful. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Like, give a thumbs up to if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you next time. Happy retirement!